Good morning, and thank you for waking up with me on Up With India. Today is Monday, October 12, 2020, and here's your morning update. According to reports, the Senate confirmation hearings for President Trump's election for the Supreme Court, Amy Coney Barrett, is set to begin today, October 12th. President Trump chose the 48-year-old judge after the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Republicans who control the Senate have worked to seat the federal appeals court judge before the presidential election in a few weeks. In Barrett's remarks to the Senate Judiciary Committee, she shared that while she has been nominated to fill Justice Gingberg's seat, no one will ever take her place. The Associated Press obtained a copy of her statement on Sunday. Democrats are expected to ask her tough questions on a variety of issues, including abortion. In more news, according to CNN, the attorney for an anonymous grand juror in the Breonna Taylor case filed a reply Sunday to the Kentucky Attorney General's request for a stay of any court order allowing the juror to speak out publicly until after a potential state appeal. The anonymous juror wants to publicly discuss their service on the Taylor case. Jefferson County Circuit Court Judge Annie O'Connell has yet to rule on the request after hearing arguments last week. On Friday, Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron indicated he would appeal if O'Connell allows the juror to speak out. He filed a motion by the state requesting a state of any order allowing the grand juror to speak publicly while the state appeals the case or seeks additional relief. In a court filing, Kevin Gloger the grand juror's attorney said the way Cameron has handled the case filed by anonymous juror number one and made public disclosures about the grand jury procedure makes it overwhelmingly clear that it's his position and he should be allowed to discuss portions of the grand were not recorded, but no one else should have the same ability. No matter how inconsistent his public statements are with the actual recordings, 26-year-old Breonna Taylor was fatally shot by Louisville Metro Police Department officers who broke down her apartment door during an unexpected drug raid on March 13th at the wrong address. In local news, Wilmington police are investigating a fatal shooting incident that occurred at approximately 12.16 p.m. in the 700 block of East 10th Street. Police located a 30-year-old male gunshot victim who was transported to the hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. This incident remains under investigation and further details will be released when possible. In more news, according to WDEL, a Claymont man faces felony charges for allegedly displaying a gun when two women told him they wouldn't let him drive his car because he was drunk. Nicholas Turkle, 30, showed the woman a gun in his waistband early Saturday morning in a house on Harvey Strawn Road in Townsend. When the women told Turkle he wasn't in any shape to get behind the wheel, Delaware State Police said. When troopers arrived, Turkle took the loaded gun from his waistband and put his hands up. Turkle's out on bail on charges of aggravated menacing, possession of a firearm during a felony, and possession of a firearm while under the influence. Now, this is is a super special story coming up next. 14-year-old Kayla Kosmowski from Middletown, Delaware, received big news that she'll be a member of Middletown High School's junior varsity cheerleading squad this season. According to WDEL, a video of Kayla, who has Down syndrome, reacting to making the squad went viral and landed her on the Today Show on Good Morning America. Kayla was very surprised and happy when she learned she'd achieved her goal and was grateful for the help of her mother, Amy. Amy Kosmowski said her daughter's dream coming true is important, not just for the chance to cheer on the Cavaliers, but to be a part of something bigger than herself. That is so sweet. Go Kayla. Best of luck to you in high school. In more local news, according to Delaware Online, jury duty is returning in Kent County this month. After postponing all trials by jury since March, court staff has sent out jury summons and trials will start again in October 19th, meaning people will once again return to the courthouse. The announcement comes after Chief Justice Collins J. Sitz Jr. determined that the courts would move into phase three of their opening plan, which increased the number of people allowed in the court buildings up to 75% capacity. The Chief Justice and court staff have worked with infectious disease expert Dr. Alfred Bacon and state officials to ensure COVID-19 precautions are followed. If you are summoned, here is what to expect. When the 
jury summons arrives in the mail, it will include three other documents, basic information about the screening process and what to expect when jurors enter the building, a list of frequently asked questions and responses, and an enhanced juror questionnaire. Since some people may be at higher risk of contracting the virus or may be facing extra financial or family hardships due to the pandemic, the courts are loosening the requirements for requesting an excusal. In more news, according to WHYY on September 27, 2020, a Delaware State University student, Devin Wright, 20, of Prince George's County, Maryland, was killed after being caught in the crossfire during a shootout that erupted Sunday night at a remote park a few miles from the university's Dover campus, police said. Authorities said the gunfire broke out during a gathering organized by students. Officers estimated 300 to 500 people were there in violation of Governor John Carney's COVID-19 state of emergency order bearing outdoor gatherings of more than 250 people without prior permission from the state. After an emotional vigil last week to celebrate Wright's life, University President Tony Allen is mourning his loss and also consoling students while warning them of their behavior during the pandemic. He warned that students who violate COVID-19 mandates face disciplines up to expulsion. Dover police say they are pursuing leads in the shootout, which also wounded a non-student. In world news, according to reports, Nigeria's government has designed dissolved an infamous police unit plagued with allegations of extrajudicial killings and abuse after days of protest against police brutality. A wave of outrage had been fueled over the last week by the emergence online of graphic footage and shared experiences of abuses by the special anti-robbery squad commonly called SARS. And SARS began as a largely online movement trending internationally on social media and gaining the support of figures including footballer Marcus Rashford and the actor John Boyega. Many of those marching in Lagos and cities across Nigeria have been in their 20s and 30s, protesting for the first time and spurred by poor connections with abuses by the security forces. After a week of protests, a statement from the office of the president, Mohamedou Buhari, said on Sunday, the special anti-robbery squad of the Nigeria police force has been dissolved with immediate effect. Inspector General Mohamed Adamu, who had previously dismissed the prospect of the unit being disbanded, also announced new measures in response to the yearnings of the Nigerian people. SARS officers would be redeployed to other units, he said, and a new policing arrangement to replace it would soon be announced. The announcement was greeted by a mixture of euphoria that the authorities had been forced to act and frustration that the measures did not go far enough. More on that story coming soon. What are your thoughts on today's news? Don't forget to like and share on Facebook and Instagram at WITN22WILM. And then later this morning, join me for a conversation with seven-time national award-winning author and philanthropist Tracy T. Cooper from Philadelphia to discuss her newest novel, and her journey to success. Thank you so much for watching Up With India for more news, updates, and information. Follow us on social media at WITN22Will.